Thank you for staying with Daybreak. We're still following up on that breaking news that has just come through to our studio. Sad and sad information there from Karibangi South, where three people have died and two have been rushed to hospital over a fire incident. The fire broke out, I think, late last night. We're still not sure about it. Kimani Mbugu is on his way there right now as we speak. Two people have been rushed to KNH. The three were all family members. They include a one year old baby. Information we have is that there was a blackout in that area and another candle was in the process. We're not sure that that is where the fire broke out, but that's what the people down there are saying. Kimai Mbugu will be giving you a quick update on that as soon as he gets to the scene. But what we know so far is that three people are dead. Two have been rushed to hospital after fire broke out in Kariubangi South at an Amani court. The three are family members. They also include a one-year-old child. We'll give you an update as soon as we know more from that incident. Also, it turns out today is International Day of Rural Women. And the caption on this newspaper is that we need to uplift these women. Mm. That's an interesting conversation because we want to bring in our women representatives who are here and they're also the member of parliament as well to find out whether the dream of a female president is even possible. And Steve Odiambo says it in that, on a tweet. He says, the funny thing about the so-called women leaders is that the most of the things they agitate for or engage themselves in don't impact Kenyan women directly. All those formations, be it Kieleweke, Tanga Tanga, only drive men's agenda. Ruro, Ruto and Raila to be in you know, respectively. Why did you miss that? I left that okay. out because I didn't want to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I go with that one? Yes? Yeah? Can I, can I speak to that? <laughs> the men's agenda. That's the only part you had. <laughs> <laughs> you just mentioned Ruto. She didn't say any other thing you said. That's Ruto. Uh, uh, Ruto okay, and let, me, let me make a comment on this. Okay. Okay. All right, let's begin okay. with the revolution. Yes, yes. First, I want to make a comment on that uh, International Day of the Rural mm. Woman. Yes. Yes. I remember last year when I attended the UN Commission on the Status of Women, mm. one of the discussions we had was about this. Mm. And I think I'm surprised they haven't changed because what we agreed in that meeting is that we would change it because there's no such thing as a rural woman. What we have is women living and working in the rural areas. Right. Mm. They are not rural women. Right. Okay. So I have a, it should have been corrected after our meeting last year at the CSW. That's one. Number two, uh, I, the, the thing is, when you see this, I'm happy that we celebrate this women because if you look at 70% of the food production in this country is actually in small scale by small scale farmers. Mm -hmm. And in those small scale farms, the people who drive those farms yeah. are actually women. Mm -hmm. The, and it's, it's the majority. If you go, you'll find that whoever is milking the cows, whoever is um, taking, and, and then uh, women and youth, you find that the milk is being taken by Boda Boda to the next station for sale, it's young people. Mm -hmm. So women actually are driving this. Many of them are not the ones who earn the money. Right. When the milk is delivered to KCC, the, ch the account is in the man's name. But the people who actually work and work on the farm mm -hmm. is, uh, is women. And we hope that that will begin uh, begin to change. Right. Then I want to mention about the comment about the formations by the formations of women that have gone. Yes, I am a member of the Inua Mama Jenga Taifa team. And what we do is we are actually making changes. Every, every time we go to a place, each of us raise money and we give to the woman that they will that we go to visit. We were in uh, Nyandarwa the other day and what happens is we, with the money we raise, we go and give and with that day uh, there was uh, we, we, women who are in the saloon industry who are given hair dryers, uh, women who don't have access to firewood anymore were given uh, cooking, uh, gas cooking uh, yeah. uh, uh, pots. Uh, there were women who are in the catering industry were given sufurias and, and, uh, and what do you call it, the food warmer yeah. equipment and so on. So, and young people were being given... Um, vehicles for being able to use yeah. to transport uh, items they were mm -hmm. being given motorbikes mm -hmm. so they so we and we are not just going as politicians to an area we are going there and we are impacting real change it will fair be. enough on yes. so, but my, my then that's where my problem <coughs> therein lies my problem are you also giving them the ability to stand for themselves in uh, political seats for example or are you waiting for 2022 and then say support so and so no 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 let's do the, the thing is and again this is gradual what we needed to do is as women is to be able to have a voice countrywide and we do in the place that we've gone we've touched lives and therefore we are able now to have credibility among the ordinary citizens in the machinani. That is step number one. Step number two, 
For example, I was speaking about it in Nyandaru and I was encouraging the women in Nyandaru and I said, Jubilee will be having its party elections in March. We must field women to have positions in the party because that's how you get a female president at the end of the day. Because if you don't do that, you'll find our political parties, women are not participating in the political parties. And in fact, I personally will be running for Secretary General of Jubilee. Come yes, March. The law says that Jubilee must have its elections because the current officials are interim. And when we do that, and if each of us, and we are working on it, you will find that Alice in mm -hmm. her in Kandara, will ensure that she has women being the party officials mm -hmm. in that constituency. What it does, it cascades to the national level. Yes. And because if women don't take leadership in political parties, mm. then it's very hard for you to be nominated by that particular political party. In fact, in countries where women have ascended to leadership, mm. it's because the political parties make a direct uh, effort, mm. sometimes even give a direct ticket so some of the women candidates in order to be able to give them an opportunity to take leadership positions. All right, Honorable Wahome, we have now failed to pass the two-third gender rule three, four times now. Uh, we, here we are having a discussion on the possibility of Kenya ever having a female president. The irony of this conversation, even as we're celebrating International Day of the Rural Woman last week, it's not even been less than a week we celebrated International Day of the Girl Child. The irony of this conversation. Okay, first and foremost, I agree with Gladys that uh, this title is wrong. Mm. And I think this is not a, this is not a, a UN uh, description of International Day for Rural Women. There could be a problem the way it was written because it is, you cannot describe any woman as mm. a rural or a city woman. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, it's uh, women living in cities and women living in the rural mm -hmm. areas. I now representing a rural constituency, I, know, I don't know how you would want to describe me, but then, let's come to your question. And, 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 and I, I'm, as I speak here, I'm also the chairperson of Inua Mama Jenga Taifa. And uh, it is definitely a, an organization now that is, uh, the membership is largely in the initial stages and we hope to reach the women that we actually, you know, are our big supporters. We are currently 43. Yes, we are 43 women members of parliament. When I say parliament, I mean the National Senate. Assembly mm -hmm. and the Senate. But the, 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 the negativity of Kenyans against women rising is amazing. And I think women should be supported. The initiatives that are, are for women should be supported. Mm -hmm. And when, if, if I was the president in this country, the question you're asking me about two-third gender rule, mm -hmm. if, if, I, if I was in the place of the president, I would have brought in the deputy president, brought in Raira, brought in all these political leaders, and I would have managed mm -hmm. to actually muscle enough support in parliament to actually pass the two thirds. So as members of parliament, so why haven't you been able to do that? the top leadership in this country, the political top leadership in this country, failed in this country, is not women. Because we are only 63 political in goodwill the National lacking. Assembly, we are only 68 women members of parliament. And, and whether you like it or not, that vote cannot be said to be 233. And you know, people must, you know, Kenyans must remove the egg, must remove the burden from the women to expect that this two-third gender rule will be achieved by women, it is the state that has the responsibility within our constitution to ensure equality, gender equality, equality of all persons that is achieved. So why what are we not this? So when this we move as women to go and reach women living in the rural areas, mm -hmm. women who we feel we can be able to tap mm -hmm. on their strengths, support them with some little funding, but in the same message, they also even showcase what their women leaders are doing right. and are able to do. So for me, the interaction itself is, is great, be it from uh, Inua Mama, be it from Embrace, be it from any other mm. women But if the agenda is the same, why do you even have different factions? First of all, let me say this, well, well, because we don't, we don't believe. ending, yeah. and I have to also have an opportunity. Yeah. Remember, there are two to one, so there are two views against one. <laughs> I would like to say this. The current women leaders in this country are failing the women who are living in rural areas. How so? Why? Because we are pretending to take, did you say motorbikes? and uh, saloon equipment, etc., etc. And yet when they stand there to listen to us, all they hear is abuses and insults of other women leaders from the very women leaders who are giving these things. Mm -hmm. Isn't that hypocrisy? How are you going to encourage and build confidence in the women 
living in rural areas, when indeed probably they've never seen you, and they're happy to see their leaders from all over the country. You come in, you give them those goodies, but when you open your mouth to speak, all you do is insult other women leaders. Well, I think it are you then? specific. You've had your opportunities, yeah. I'm going to talk. Let's be specific, and because you've we had don't want to extend. Right. No, 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 I get so angry as a woman leader who's worked in the women movement for half of my political life. Because we, it doesn't matter what formation you come from. Once you are a leader who is a woman, the women movement or the women leaders are supposed to encourage you to build confidence. How are you going to get that woman president when anybody who goes up there, you get up as a woman leader and you abuse them and insult them in public? That just doesn't work. So all this is hypocrisy. So I'm not going to talk about what, what people are going around doing and giving. It is not what you give those people that's going to give us a woman president. It is not. Women leaders or political women leaders must learn to respect their colleagues or their fellow women leaders in order to build confidence amongst the women who are living in rural, rural areas who probably have not had an opportunity to be in this platform. But to say we are giving them things, what are those things you are giving them when you can't build their conf confidence in women leadership? In mm. as far as two-thirds is concerned, the two-thirds fight is not just for the elite wom woman. We know that many counties are now coming up with village councils. And had the two-third policy passed, it would have also ensured that right at the village level, women would also participate in the village councils because not more than two-thirds of those seats would have gone to just one gender. So the fight for two-thirds rule was actually going to impact on the lives of even the women living in the rural areas, especially in key decision making because at that low level the village councils are going to be very powerful and we know we have women in different areas whether they are churches whether they are what strong strong women who might not be in parliament but they are strong in those units where they belong okay. and this was going mm -hmm. to give them an opportunity but unfortunately the principle did not pass but okay. as i say my last word yeah women leaders political women leaders are cheating this country and when you talk about Inua Mama is, going to give what, 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 is that including and you yourself? stand there and you abuse, you You're are not a woman well. leader. Is, is that including yourself? It's including me, women leaders. But what you will notice as a difference between Embrace and Inua, you will never see a member of Embrace stand up to abuse another woman leader. Never. Whether that in, in support of Raila, in support of Uhuru, they will never do that. But all that Inua does is abuse other women leaders. And okay. You cannot tell me now that we you are. Right. Right. No, 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 Kisumu County yes. has just ended doing exactly what she actually is saying others are doing. She has rubbished the work of Inua Mama. She has rubbished the work of women leaders in this country and said she sees nothing good because possibly her ideologies and the ideology of embrace does not agree with the working objectives of Inua Mama. And I think that is missing the point. And therefore, I don't want to dwell on that. I want to say that I want to encourage them to reach the women. I want to encourage them to do it differently. I want to encourage them to even <laughs> come up and identify the women leadership that they want to support. We are going to do exactly that ourselves. And we are not saying we are perfect. It is a long journey. It is a rough journey. It is not funded by anybody. We are putting money together mm. ourselves. And when you look at uh, the work that we are doing, and you know, obviously there are expectations from the women that actually support us. And it is from those small beginnings that we can actually be able, even as we talk about uh, being in parliament, come up with a policy that do exactly those kind of things. Because you know what? The money that we are getting and giving women, for me, as a country is peanut. We need to support big time. Okay. When I look at this page, I think the page that you were, we were talking about, about this lady here. Yeah. The, you, you'll find that uh, Auma here, Auma is saying she would like to access 
to loans to be able to expand yeah. her fish trade. Okay. You know, people would call her a trade monger, but she's a, tra she's, she's a fish monger, monger. Yeah. but she's a fish trader. She would okay. like to access money. Those are the kind of policies eventually we should be dealing with and so that we All can right. actually create an enabling climate. Fair where, and then we can reach where Rosa is, is, Fair is aspiring. Surely, very yeah. briefly, because mm -hmm. we're running out of time. Yeah, yes. give me a chance because yes. they are too too She was responding to yeah, what you I'm said. To so you I was responding. Yes, I think uh, uh, I'm in a very uncomfortable situation. I think as a person, I think I've been, you can, I, anybody can see any clips when I've spoken publicly. I have never made any disparaging remarks against any woman. And to say that Inua Mama does that, I think is rather unfair. But in any case, I think the public, whatever statements we've made is out there in the public. Anyone can check on YouTube and then we can isolate if there is anyone who has made any disparaging remarks. So I think, it's, uh, and, and I, for me, I encourage embrace whatever they're doing. I support, and I've said it on this television station, yeah. for me, the more formations of women we have in this country, mm -hmm. the better it is for us. Okay. Because for the first time, people, women have visibility. For the first time, women are being felt. And therefore, even if Embrace was coming to a Singishu County, you're welcome. Even though you're pulling in different directions? Because yes, if the agenda yes. is the same, why do you have different factions? To so, no, with? you know what? At the moment, at the moment, we, 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 we have decided, with the women who have joined us, I said we are 42 by, 43 actually now, mm. the 43 that we, already, that we already as a group, we believe in the same thing. I think Embrace also started and they were, they, I think, I'm not sure, but it seems like it started oh, because okay. of me to support the There is the a bit of difference so. because yes. they, they also, they, they, so let them there is a bit of difference, for them. Okay. Yeah. A bit so, of difference yeah. on that because mm -hmm. they say they also support hardship and okay. maybe so, some of us do not support, support hardship. But so what you we are saying is, of, and and for me the most, the most yeah. important thing yeah. is that I believe in it because I'm able to go and make a difference in the lives of women. We are empowering them economically. Next month we are going to be in Wasingishu and I know we will be able, we have over 50 groups okay. that we are going to give money mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. them to be able to begin to trade. All right. There are young people that we're able going to start businesses for. We have young people who have finished um, uh, the, the TVET uh, training, technical training, yeah. and we are giving them equipment so that they can set up their own business. Right. That is something that is dear to my heart. Okay. And I believe in that. And if Noah is doing that, that is why I joined them. Yeah. Final but remarks. Can I just say One this? Line. I didn't think this was going to be a um, competition between Inua and Embrace. But all I'd like to say is... But you're the one who started it. No, 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 I didn't talk about it. <laughs> that talks about it, Nua. But all I'd like to say is this. Um, the National Government Affirmative Action Fund, which actually is the fund that empowers the women representatives, 47 women representatives in this country, to actually reach the women in the rural areas, to encourage them, to encourage all those small, uh, uh, encourage them in all those small charmers or table banking groupings that they've been having, so that they can grow bigger, and so that they can be able to have an opportunity yeah. where, if they need a loan yeah. or if they need to borrow money, they can borrow money amongst themselves. Okay. We know how difficult it is for the woman living in rural areas to access banks and to access other uh, to un other money lending uh, lending corporations because they do not have the requirements that those banks will need. So what we set to do as the women representatives is to actually grow those groupings by actually giving them grants and encouraging them to form structures that will allow them to borrow money from within so that they are able to sustain their small businesses or they are able to sustain the needs that they might have as a group. So that okay. is being done by women representatives. I'd also like to say that what women representatives do, again, made possible by National Government Affirmative Action Fund, is to lift young girls who probably might have not got good grades good enough to take them to colleges or to take them to secondary schools. Okay. We would lift them up and give them an op opportunity through empowering them in skills which they can use wherever they are. Right. So we are doing that. But okay. I will say that yeah. as an effort, and Embrace works very closely with the women representatives, in an effort to also encourage these young girls or encourage the women in the rural areas to participate in political leadership, we actually talk to them and try to live, to give them the confidence by showing them yeah. the way we live. Okay. So what we do, you will find that no Embrace member, yeah. and as a rule, 
will get up and speak against another woman. Okay. It, whether the woman has done what, we will defend that woman and never speak against a woman in front of those women who we are telling that there is a big opportunity for women. We make 52% of this population. And if we want to rise to the president level, yeah. we can rise. Right. We will not do that by abusing other women right. in front of the very women okay. who you are trying to encourage to climb the political ladder. That's why you, you will not. You refuse to give an example of who abused who. I'm not going to name it. Okay. Okay. It is it's not, all right. It is not I'm not, asking, I'm not asking, asking you to mention. I'm not asking will, you to mention. Just, and I will just ask you. It's we right. just have to play I'm those not, clips I'm because not you to even Honorable Wahome sitting here has done that several times. She has just failed the test. Has done that several times of the rule. That test according to Inu. Of course, I've always tried to fail that test. I'd never like to pass that test according to Inu. Because I can never use a woman in public. Thank you so much for your judgment. No, it's okay. Order, no, order, order. you don't abuse women in public and then pretend that you want to grow women politically. This is a national and that's why I'm not abusing. Let's, this is a national and and this is a well, ladies, let's, let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. Thank this you so much for making time. But uh, that's why I'm not abusing. abusing you. I'm that's okay. Honorable Rosa Buyu, that's fine. Let's leave it at that. Honorable Rosa Buyu, Kisumu, woman representative. No, 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 no. We, we've wrapped up that conversation. Honorable Rosa Buyu, Kisumu, woman representative. Thank you so much for coming through. Honorable Gladys Shole, woman representative was in Gishu, Asante Sana. And Honorable Alice Wahome, Member of Parliament, Kandara. Let's see what you're saying, because this is essentially your show. Let's see what you're saying on social media. First, Chebi from Baringo says, Kindly remember those who made trouble after elections are the ones enjoying handshake. Those who wanted peace after elections are the ones making noise. The good question to all of us is this. Who is genuine, consistent, and moral? No one. Let us all repent and build one Kenya. All right. That's um, SMS. Remember, if you're on SMS, you can tell us your name and where you're watching from. You don't say who you are, but you say when Ryla played um, his part, I'm guessing, as the opposition leader, the likes of Oahome were always his critics. Ryla has done all it takes as an opposition leader, but Kenyans do not appreciate. Do you expect him to suffer for the rest of his life fighting for people who don't appreciate? All right, let's continue taking a look at your feedback, Trevor. Well, you don't leave a name away texting from, but you say to me, Handshake came to make few leaders happy. As a hustler, my life is getting harder and harder while opposition's presidential ambitions are getting easier and easier. Okay. Um, if you want to know the truth about the handshake, is what you say, look at the people who benefited through the state appointment. Kenya is worse with handshake. The president knows he can have any law passed, even if it hurts the common Mwanaichi, because he will simply call his handshake friend. <laughs> All right, let's see what else you're saying here. Still on SMS, kindly tell us your name and where you're texting from as we move to Twitter. Let's see what you're saying online. Isaac Mudusi says we should be asking what is good about leadership, not what is good about female leadership. No human being is limited. <laughs> Yeah. Festus Robert, good morning. You say, let's not vilify Handshake. Handshake was to create the, mil mil the milieu to produce, or to pursue rather, other objectives, poor taxation policy, red tape, high energy prices. That's where the conversation should be. Not on the Handshake, that's an es um, escapist yeah. argument. Yep, let's see what else you're saying. You call yourself Suggestion Box 17. Handshake was a first aid given to a more serious issue and no concrete measures were put in place. All right, Wamugure now eight is you say it was brought it has brought peace and also massive corruption in the loss of public funds. No checks, no one checks the government. All right, let's see what else you're saying. Mosetti says handshake doesn't affect the economy negatively. The Tanga Tanga MPs should understand that. The economy is the way it is because of the overborrowing by Jubilee. The government can't even sustain its financial needs. All right. Those were your feedback in regards to today's conversation. We want to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, one of the other discussions that we'll be having is the Global Leadership Summit. I'll tell you more about it on the other side of this break. See you in a bit.